So welcome everybody. This is uh, uh, session two of the four presentations that Dr. Michael Bale is doing for us on the Lean Leadership Development Model. This is on coaching and developing others. So uh, Dr. Bale, thank you very much. Go ahead. Well, thank you, George. Th thanks for inviting me again. Um, I think that coaching and develop others is uh, probably one of the of the greatest uh, contributions that Jeff made and really, really enlightened me in many things. And I'll try to talk you through this as, as I go. So here's a question. Here's a question. All of us are in charge of a number of people or are leaders in our fields or have people around us. And here's the fundamental question is, is do we use the few brains around us, the five or six people we talk to every day, and then lots of pairs of hands, or do we actually use every brain in the organization? It's a very simple question, but I think that this is the question that makes or breaks it. That Henry Ford is, uh, is rumored or is, is apocryphal. He said that the problem with that, that every time he hired a, a pair of hands, um, there is a brain that came attached to it. Well, here we're turning this around and say, well, the brilliant thing is that um, we have so many brains in the company. The real question is, how do we create companies that actually use all the potential from all this intelligence in, in terms of creating value for customers without generating so much waste? So um, talking about which, uh, we, uh, you know, Freddie and I couldn't resist the temptation to actually put it in the model to try to explain this uh, developing people. Um, and uh, for all faults, uh, for all sins, uh, certainly, I, I doubt that any self-respecting Toyota veteran would uh, would uh, agree with this. But again, we, we we're trying to communicate this thing, so this is the best we could come up with. The the heart of this is that uh, both result, results and the relationships matter. You cannot have you need a good relationship to have improvement, because the the, the cultural core of Lean is problems first. And in order to face problems, you have to have a solid relationship. The first is again, she can go to. The first is to go and see for yourself. You look with, with this is a oh no uh, quote or misquote, but uh, you look you look with your feet and you think with your hands, and you, you you go and see for yourself. And I cannot stress how important it is. Back to this, so wash your hands three times a day. Um, uh, I'll go. I'll talk about this some more in the next seminar on Kaizen. I cannot stress how important this is. The first thing we're doing is this dimension of challenge. Now, uh, the the important thing to have is that the executive in in the lean situation and back to the self development, they have some long term issues in mind that are always going to be the same. I mean, you need to improve your quality, you need to improve your delivery, you need to improve your variety, you need to improve your flexibility. This doesn't really change much from one year to the next. What, what changes is the conditions in which this happens. So here you have it. The first thing we were looking for here is how do we link the customer smile, customer preferences, with what is okay and not okay in the production process. When you do this as a, you're on the, you're, you're the leader, you're the CEO, you're on the shop floor, you challenge people on their understanding of what they're doing. Um, this, this is uh, interesting to them, but it's also, also uh, a bit stressful. I mean, it, it creates some tension. So you have to balance this yin yang thing, this challenge by listening. And listening, and I mean listening until it hurts. And what listening means is that people will find a lot of barriers in their mind for why this is not possible or this can't be done or this is unrealistic. And sometimes you, because you have a bit different perspective, you think, ah, oh, come on, it can't be that hard, you know? But actually it is. If it's, it's a barrier, even if it's in their minds, it's a barrier. And this is, listening is really about how do we hear what people say? However, let's face it, giving people an objective without giving them a system to get there is just cruel. And this is what so many executives do. I don't care how you do it, just bring me the results. Well, that's not very nice, you know? Come on, if, if they knew how to do it, they have done it before. I mean, they're, 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 that's why they're here to work. So the second part of this thing is once we've challenged people, and we do, when we listen to the obstacles, we hear the obstacles, 
then we have to help them with ways to overcome these obstacles. And they say, we need to teach. And we need to teach two things, how to work, skill, work skills, and how to improve improvement skills. So here, here's in this company, the, one of the very first practices we started, which we called Dojo. But Dojo is a plan where we said the first responsibility of every supervisor is to personally train one-on-one -on -one all their operators. So what you see here is uh, the, you have on the, on, on the, on the left of the board, you have all the operators in, one, one, in a couple of teams under one supervisor. You have the days. And every day, the supervisor spends 20 minutes on one person. The next day, the next, the next day, the next. And they go into standards and they check standards together. And when the standard is not written, they write the standard together. So next time you come to it. And, but basically, we make sure that every frontline manager spends 20% of their day talking to one person into the details of the work. And we teach the work. This is really, um, I can't stress how important this is. But what is important is that this really is the architecture for progress. Now, so you've cha you, you're doing the challenging part, you're listening to obstacles, you're teaching people, and, but then uh, reality fights back. You know, um, there's a, there, you're in the fog of war, lots of things are happening. You get a lot of friction, some simple things actually are difficult to do, they resist. So you need to hold people's hands and you need to support them and to develop them. And, and so we're getting to the other part of this is, is you, you, you need to understand that you, you're growing trees here, you're not building bridges. So you, you need to start small and grow people. Which brings us to something that we discovered in this particular company, which is the teamwork, the sort of collaboration. And, and um, when, you, when you do so much Kaizen and you do so much problem solving, at some point you wonder what makes the difference between a, a, good problem solving, bad problem solving. Uh, some problem solving are fake problem solving. People just write stuff and they're not really thinking. Sometimes problem solving is brilliant and you see ideas you've never seen before. And we realize that the difference is teamwork, is the intensity of the collaboration between people. Now, this is one of the most amazing things for me as a sociologist. It took me a long time to see it. Back to going to the Gemba. You go to the Gemba because when they learn, you learn. You go to the Gemba and you give people challenges. Say, please, can you improve in that direction? You don't have a destination in mind, but you want better quality or better just in time. And this translates through the visual control into very specific problems. They solve the problem, and sometimes you look at it and you learn something you didn't expect, which goes way beyond, beyond the local solution. Convening, I think, in a month or so to, to, to go to the, to go, basically, we, the, the next session will be put into this Kaizen thing that we discussed today that seemed to interest people. Thank you, Michael. Go ahead, guys. Say thank you, and then uh, you can leave if you like. Thank you, Michael. Bye. Michael. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael.